Hello there, friends. Welcome again to Grace Baptist Church, our Sunday night service here. It's November the 7th, the first Sunday of November, and we're glad you're here today and tuned in this evening. I hope you set your clock back in time. Sometimes it's easy to miss up, miss out on the time change Sundays, but today was the time change. We fall back in the fall and spring forward in the, in the spring. Well, let's have a word of prayer. We're going to get right into our message for tonight. Our Father, we thank you for allowing us this privilege to be able to share just another portion, the blessed book called the Bible. Teach us things that would help us to know what true defilement is and that, Lord, that we would stay pure and clean through your grace, mercy, and through the blood of our Savior Jesus. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, if you have your Bible, turn back with me. We've been looking in matthew chapter number 15 starting in verse number 10 we're up to verse 15 now on the principle of defilement what is it that really defiles a person so many people say well if you do this you're defiled or if you eat that you're defiled <laughs> well according to the bible they've missed it all together according to what jesus says they've missed it all together we're going to see what Jesus has to say about it. Number one, we saw the principle of defilement. Number two, we saw the exposure of defilement. Then we're going to finish up with the explanation of defilement. Matthew 15, verse number 15. Here's what it said. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Jesus, declare unto us this parable. He didn't understand what Jesus is trying to say. Basically, what Jesus is trying to say in way of review What's in the heart is much more important than what we eat or drink. What's in the heart eventually is going to come out into the life. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. And so a person can defile themselves by having a wicked heart and expressing it in their actions and in their words. So Peter couldn't quite grasp this concept. And so we have defined a parable he says here that he's going to give peter a parable declare unto us this parable and of course he's already given the parable but he's going to explain it to him the parable is nothing but an earthly story with a heavenly meaning so jesus gives the meaning of what he just taught and he breaks it down into practical considerations the parable is not at all hard to understand but it was hard for these disciples to understand because even years later simon peter had a problem with eating certain types of meats that were forbidden in the old testament but when you look at acts chapter number 10 verse number 14 god sent a sheep vision down to peter and told him put your hand in there and get all of that food and eat it pork um shrimp catfish those are things that were forbidden to the jews but yet we know that god declared it clean and here's what it says in acts 10 verse number 14 peter said not so lord for i have never eaten anything that is common or unclean and the lord said peter what i call clean don't you call it unclean and i'm glad that he cleaned it up <laughs> So we have more to eat from, more of a menu. But back to Matthew chapter 15, look at verse 16. Now Peter's asked, the Lord, tell us about this parable. Teach us something here if we can understand. So Jesus said, are ye also yet without understanding? He looked up there at the big fisherman. He said, don't you understand this principle about what's on the inside is much more important than what's on the outside. It's the inside that God looks at. It's the heart. For out of the heart are the issues of life. Proverbs says, we may be able to fool some of the people some of the time, but we can never fool God because he knows what's in the heart. 1 Samuel 16, 7, write that scripture down. 1 Samuel 16, 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance. Now he's talking about Samuel finding a new king for the nation of Israel. He looked at all of Jesse's sons. None of them fit the qualification that 
God was looking for. And so he asked him, do you have any more? Oh, yeah, we got one more. He's a shepherd. He's out there with his little sheep. Samuel said, bring him in. And so God's giving him some instruction. Samuel, don't look on the outward appearance. Look on the heart. That's what God does. Because that's what he says here. Look not on his countenance, nor even the height of his statue. I imagine David was not quite that tall yet. He's a very young man here. Because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Looks on the heart. God sees your heart, friend. Is your heart right with the Lord? Are there things in your heart that need not be there? Confess that. Go to the Lord and say, God, I am sorry. I don't want this impure thought, this impure deed, whatever it is, it's pulling you back. You confess it and he'll forgive it. And he'll wash you as white as snow. And whoo, thank God you'll have the joy bells ringing again. Don't let Satan pull you down with a dirty heart. Keep that heart pure and clean. That's what Jesus basically said. So the prophet and the priest Samuel, he was going to anoint this new king over Israel. He looks at all the brothers of the shepherd boy David. So God told Samuel, anoint David. He's the one. Oh, he's a small shepherd right now, but he will grow into a man who has a heart after God. A perfect man? No. By no means. There was only one who was perfect. And that's our Savior Jesus. But a forgiven man. And a good man. And so we cannot see what a person is thinking on the inside. But God can see what they're thinking. And he does know what we're thinking on the inside. Matthew fifteen seventeen. Do not ye yet understand. That whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought. Jesus is saying here, what goes in a man, the food and the refreshment, will eventually come out as waste materials out of the human body. But then in verse number 18, but those things which proceed out of the mouth cometh from the heart, and that's what defiles the man. You can pretty much tell what kind of heart a person has after talking to them for about five minutes. Uh, if they're cursing and swearing, complaining or gossiping, you can pretty much tell. But if they're praising God or they've got that calm, faithful disposition about them and they just glow with the presence of the Lord, you know that person's a godly person. And you can tell a good person from a bad person, just by the things that they say. What comes in from the inside comes out to the outside. So anyway, Jesus gets into a little more explanation of this, and he shifts the focus from the outside to the heart, to the inside. He is saying that food and beverage, that's not what defiles and pollutes a man. You can't be polluted by eating a sausage biscuit. Uh, you can't be polluted by eating a, you know, pork chop. <laughs> now, in the Old Testament, they wouldn't eat pork. But I'm glad we can eat pork today. They wouldn't eat shrimp. I love fried shrimp. They wouldn't eat catfish because they didn't have scales on it. But good old fried catfish, really good, really good. So he is saying here, food and beverage... That's not what defiles or pollutes a person, but the words and the actions of a wicked heart, that's what defiles a person. And that's what pollutes a person. Look at verse 19. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. Basically, Jesus is saying here that evil actions start out as evil thoughts. Murder starts out in a person's heart long before they ever commit the murder. But think about it. They dwell upon it. adultery or fornication. Usually it starts in the heart, in the thinking of a person. What they think about, eventually, they don't get rid of it. They'll end up committing that act with another person. So Jesus is stating here the principle that he had taught in the Sermon on the Mount. You remember Matthew chapter 5? 
he taught the Sermon on the Mount. And here's what he said in Matthew 5, 27 and 28. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So he's saying there is a way to commit adultery without even going through the act of it. Just dwelling upon it, thinking about it. So he said, get rid of that. Ask the Lord for help. Ask, ask the Lord to help keep your thoughts pure and clean, as Philippians chapter 4 says. So what we see here is this. A person commits adultery, steals, lies, even murder. Speak out against God because of the thoughts they have on the inside. What's on the inside eventually comes out. Verse, verse number 20, Matthew 15, 20. These are the things that defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. See, they had strict rules about hand washing. You had to wash your hands real good before you ate your meal. And that's good hygiene. It's a good practice, especially when you got a coronavirus on the loose and you're trying to wash your hands before you touch any food. But that's not really what defiles a person, spiritually speaking. He's saying here it's the heart of the matter, is the matter of the heart. We work hard to keep the outward appearance attractive, but what's in our hearts is even more important. That's what he's teaching. The way we are deep down where others can't see matters much to God. He's looking on the heart. What are we like on the inside? When people become Christians, God makes them different on the inside. He changes us from the inside out. He'll continue that process of change inside if we'll only ask and be willing to let him change us. God wants to help us seek good, healthy thoughts, good, healthy motives, not just healthy food and exercise, which is good, but he wants us to keep our thoughts healthy and pure and clean. Now Jesus brings the parable to a close. He says that what pollutes a person here is not what they eat, but what they think. Our thought life has to stay pure, has to stay clean if we're going to remain pure and clean on the outside. It has to start on the inside. I like Dr. J. Vernon McGee, and I read after him many times in my studies, and Dr. McGee adds at this point, we are certainly seeing this working out in our contemporary culture. We are in the period today of the new morality. We've reached the day that Isaiah talked about when he said there'll come a day when they'll call evil good and good evil. Have you noticed that? I mean, there's people that call bad good and good people bad people. And the same is true in that day as it was here. That's Isaiah 5, verse number 20. Dr. McGee goes on to say this, those of us who believe the Bible, we're considered square. We're considered entirely wrong, out of date. What do we have to do with this day of freedom? Now that the lid has been taken off and man can express what's in his heart, do we have a new morality? Dr. McGee said, no, we have the same old things that we've always had. There's evil thoughts, there's murder, there's adultery, fornication, false witness, blasphemy, thefts, we have really opened up a Pandora's box and we are in trouble, he says. Man has to be controlled. He is the most vicious animal on earth. <laughs> we put other animals in cages, but man is free to do his own thing. And our Lord told us what mankind will do. And he said, all of these things are what really defiles us. All around us today, there's an emphasis on sex and the schools churches, the television, the radio, and it stares at you from billboards and magazines and news line, headlines from newspapers. Friends, these are the things that defile us. Don't let me 
Don't tell me that you're immune to it because Dr. McGee goes on to say, none of us are immune to it. Our children and our young people, they're being defiled, all in the lofty, soundy termination of freedom of speech. The things that are in the heart are now coming out into the light. And our Lord made a tremendous statement here when he basically said in verse number 20, these are the things that defile a man, not just unwashed hands. That has nothing to do with it, he says. That's why we have to guard. Guard your mind. Guard your thoughts. Stay away from those who would poison you. Stay away from those who would pollute what you think. Garbage in, garbage out. Don't forget that. If you see something on television that's impure or unclean, take that channel changer and change the channel. Don't let that stuff come up. You say, well, I can take it. Oh, friends, just one scene, the devil can use it, bring it back up in your memory to get you off track. Oh, he'll come to you and he'll get you to thinking about that act of sin. Pretty soon, if we're not careful, we'll defile ourselves, not only with our thoughts, but with our deeds. Put up a guard. Never allow Satan to get a foothold into your thought life because, friends, it'll spill over into your action life and that's what pollutes a person not whether a person has washed their hands not whether a person has eaten pork or ham thank god we can still go to stamey's barbecue and get a good old plate of barbecue and be blessed by god thank god we can still go to bojangles or biscuitville and eat a sausage biscuit now we've learned in this passage that we, what we think about determines what we do in life. How is our thought life this evening? Are there any impure thoughts going on in our minds? If so, what do we need to do? Confess it to the Lord. Don't try to sweep it under the rug. That's only going to make you less happy. You want to be happy. You want to be joyful. You want to stay pure and clean with God. Best thing to do is come to the Lord let him wash you let him cleanse you stay in the word of god stay in prayer stay in the house of god and remember this verse psalm 119 verse number nine psalm 119 verse number nine wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word how can you cleanse your way by taking heed to the word of god I read recently Roberto Clemente, who was a great Pittsburgh pirate. There was a bat that he had used in game seven of the 1960 World Series, and it sold for over $41,000. One bat, $41,000 by Roberto Clemente. There was another bat used by one of the older players, Honus Wagner, back in 19. 17. That bat went for over $44,000. Could you imagine that? That's more than, you know, I paid for my first house for one baseball bat, Honus Wagner's bat. But here's the one that beats it all. The very best signature that Babe Ruth ever left on a baseball was sold for $388,375. That's over $388,000 for one baseball signed by Babe Ruth, who may have been the greatest baseball player. That's an awful lot of money. Almost $400,000 for one baseball. Now, friends, I can tell you what's much more important than any of those items. That is a gift. That gift is the gift of eternal life. If you've never trusted Christ, call upon him today. Ask him to come into your heart. He'll wash you, he'll cleanse you, and he'll take that defilement away and put in pure, clean thoughts in your heart and in your mind. Thank you again for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful week. We'll be back Wednesday night, Lord willing. And until then, 
we're going to have a word of prayer and be dismissed. Father, thank you for the time that we've had. To look at what defiles a person. Thank you, Lord, for the precious Bible. That if we'll take heed to the Bible, it'll cleanse us from the inside out. It'll cut the bad out and put the good in. Bless each one that takes the time to listen to these broadcasts. Give them a special blessing. We'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thank you again for tuning in. May the Lord richly bless you.